And welcome to part two. Let's go ahead and set this up for a stereo anaglyph, in other words, a 3D image. And if you do not have your pair of 3D glasses, uh, go ahead and consult the uh, announcement that I left in Canvas that will explain to you where you can pick up a copy for your own personal use. Uh, I would highly recommend a copy of 3D glasses while working on this. It makes it a lot easier. Although I've had students who, uh, for one reason or another, are incapable of seeing 3D, they're perfectly able to do this assignment just by following the cues of aligning everything and being very careful getting that all set. So just because you have uh, uh, one eye doesn't mean you can't do this assignment. It's actually quite doable, which is why I'm still doing this assignment. So we have the left and the right image, and we're not going to paste these directly into a new uh, file, we're actually going to utilize the channels and start uh, creating it that way. Now, keep in mind that the stereo anaglyph glasses, the 3D glasses we're using, are the classic 1950 glasses. So, in other words, they have one red and one uh, blue or cyan lens. Uh, some of these glasses had green. That's fine, too. This works better for uh, Photoshop because of the way that the channels are handled. So, we're just going to do it that way. So, uh, go ahead and flip over your assignment sheet, or if you've lost your physical handout, uh, go ahead and open up the second JPEG from the Canvas website of the scan of the handout and uh, you'll be able to go through that way. So we're going to create an, a file the exact same size as this file, but I didn't keep track of the measurements. That's absolutely fine. Control A or select all and then Control C or edit copy. We'll get it in the edit buffer, which means, means when we make a new file, Control N or file new. Please, please, please do use the shortcuts as much as possible. You want to get quick at this stuff, so shortcuts are the way to go. Now, the copied image has the correct pixel width, height, and resolution without us even having to really dig in there. How great is that? It just is working off of the clipboard because the preset is set to clipboard. Now, this is an older version of Photoshop that I'm working in. The new one has some hideous graphics all over the place that makes it considerably more difficult to do simple things. However, it's all the data is all still in there. They just have it more on the right. So you'll notice that we have the advanced open, the pro color profile set to the sRGB IEC 6 1966 version 2.1. It's exactly what we want. But if you just went ahead and hit OK and you weren't really paying attention, not a problem. You could just go back to edit and go to assign profile and then assign the sRGB IEC 6 1966 2.1. Tell it OK. And again, that's the same one our TV is supposedly using. And so we'll be able to demonstrate this in class without weird stuff happening. So now this is actually going to be the progenitor of the file we'll turn in. But again, we'll be turning in a JPEG, not the PSD file. So when you save it, I would recommend keeping this one around just for your own sake. And we could call this 3D output. So we have our 3D output and the lab, which is our 3D source. So right now, you can see that we just have a white blank document. We're going to need to actually get some stuff in here. So I have my channels palette open and my layers palette so I can pay attention to what I'm doing. You can see the tiny previews change right up, up and down here as I toggle between left and right. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. We're going to go to the channels palette, choose the uh, red panel and paste the flattened left photo into it. So in order to do that, we need the left photo. So I got the left photo here. I've got everything selected. Again, that's just select all. And then you're just going to copy that, edit copy or control C, pop on over to your new document, your output document. You want the third channel, the, I'm uh, sorry, control three, the red channel. So just activate that one, only one eyeball. And I did that just by clicking on here. I'm going to paste straight in. So why did I do that? Well, if we go over to the full RGB version, you can see that we have this bright cyan image. And if you have your 3D glasses with you, if you hold up the blue filter, you'll see that it disappears entirely. If you look through the red filter, you'll see that it's still sitting there. What? Amazing, right? That's, uh, that's how this assignment goes. The... Uh, uh, stereo anaglyph glasses are working as filters. Photoshop's channels are working as the encoder. Amazing, right? So we need to fill in these other two channels, though, because we've got no data in there. So we're going to pop on over to our source, our 3D lab file here. I'm going to turn off the left image, make sure that I've got the right one here. And you go over to uh, the right. 
and I'm going to select all, control A, copy, control C, pop on over to our output. Now I'm gonna go to the blue channel, paste that in, but notice that now we've got green, that's not what we're after, but blue and green will make the, uh, this, this uh, red color that we're after. So that'll, that'll do it. Pretty cool, right? So now again, with the 3D glasses on, oh yeah, look at that, we've got a 3D effect. Not the greatest effect, but let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. When my cat Hobbs comes up and says hello to interrupt the video, maybe if I pet him a little, he won't make any noise. Seems to have worked. So I'm going to hit F on the keyboard twice to bring up the, uh, the, the presentation mode. Presentation mode. There we go. I'm going to deselect, control D, get the magnifying tool with the Z for zoom. Click in a couple of times and touch those 3D glasses yet again. And there's that 3D effect that we're looking for. Get out of here, Photoshop. Don't do that. There's that 3D effect that we're looking for. Looks pretty decent. I'd say that that's about done. There are some additional things I could do. You notice that I did not uh, level the field here, so everything's at an angle. Probably be a good idea to go in and change that. Uh, now that everything's said and done, uh, though, I think that we're getting a nice 3D effect. At this point, if you have a series of photos, it might be a good idea to go in and swap out the uh, channels for the right lens or the left lens, whichever one you went to test, test some different ones, see if you can get things going. And remember the way that you want to do that quickly is way back at your 3D lab, when you're setting up these guys, just keep pasting in photo after photo after photo, reduce the opacity, go ahead and adjust these so they line up, re-increase the opacity, et cetera, et cetera. When you're done, since you did these as adjustment layers, uh, you just turn them on, you'll have the exact same adjustments in all of them. So they're, they're exactly set. So I'm gonna save my 3d output and we need to turn this in one more time as a jpeg you don't want to lose points on that so i'm going to name this correctly this uh this semester this is assignment 11. so i'm going to do 11 last name first name and number number so zero one in this case and we want a jpeg so we have a jpeg minimize that pop up in the 3D demo folder. Take a look, always double check that your stuff's actually there. So was it okay for me to just toss this in, knowing that my my resolution was 180 instead of 300? Well, double checking the format to turn it in, it says size is varied, recommended resolution is 300, but it's not required. So in other words, if it looks all right, it's probably all right, we're able to zoom in, we can see it okay, we're all set. All right, class, that's about all you need. Don't forget to put this uh, in the assignment uh, folder underneath assignment 11, and uh, I will see you in two weeks time since next week is Thanksgiving. Uh, keep in mind that this video is being recorded in uh, November 2017 in case you're running across this later and I've reused this video for another class. Uh, otherwise, you all have a happy Thanksgiving and you have a great weekend. Bye.